Hello everyone and welcome back. Today you join me in my E85 BMW Z4 3 litre and I want to do a fuel efficiency test because I really like fuel economy if you don't know, if you are new around here. And I've done this on numerous occasions in several cars I've owned, such as my C63. No, oh no, ugh. 20.18 miles per gallon. Oh no, 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 no. My Volvo S80 V8. 23.46 miles per gallon. Blimey, that is, that's really good. And also my Porsche Cayenne Turbo. 14.87 miles per gallon, wow. So I'm very fascinated to see how this car fares against the other three cars with this having two less cylinders and a smaller engine. So let's now get ourselves down to the petrol station, uh, fill up the tank completely and zero all the computers and then we'll embark on journey from there. Right, so we just brimmed the car at the petrol station and we have now reset the MPG and the trip computer. So now we should just go ahead and get this journey underway. So what exactly does this test entail? Well, to start off with, we'll do the average town driving where you get stuck in traffic and then do your obligatory shopping trip. And after that, then we'll do some more flamboyant, enthusiastic driving in the country lanes. And then after that, we'll finish off with some mundane A road slash motorway driving as then we have a collective as a whole of different sort of driving all in one and then we'll fill up back at the petrol station do some calculations afterwards and then we should get a figure of what sort of mpg we've averaged over the whole journey i'm eagerly excited about this test more so because this is one of the more economical cars i've had on the channel but i have some experience of this car and it's give me a few stray numbers uh long distance short journeys and a bit around town i have some sort of understanding what they do but as a collective I'm not entirely sure what we'll get. Um, so this will be really, really interesting to see what sort of MPG we'll average. In-town steering's not too bad. It's not too light or too heavy unless you have it in sport mode, but it is a bit crashy over the bumps, which will be apparent as we get onto the country lanes a bit later on. But one of the best observations I've noticed in this car so far is it's got an incredible turning circle on it. I didn't think it would. Um, it's really handy, especially for a gargantuan bonnet like this one has. So if you are going around a lot of mini roundabouts or tight turns you are in a town, you don't have to worry about, I don't know, cutting someone's legs off with the end of the bonnet because it has got a very, very good turning circle. I was worried when I first got this car that it would be a bit intimidating to drive, but even though it has this long, imposing, protruding bonnet, it's not intimidating at all, and it's actually very easy to live with on a daily basis. Right, so I'm now off to the supermarket to get some everyday essentials, and I'm just gonna go park quickly. This is what you do normally in a town. You go shopping and buy your everyday things, so I'm gonna go in here park up and then we'll then continue our journey after that so this is a nice space for me one thing I'm not really good at though with this car is spatial awareness obviously it's short at the back but because it's got no parking sensors it doesn't mean I do need to do some weird maneuvering there's a bollard behind me but the only way I can really notice how far I'm back is by opening the door I shan't dare go any further, but yeah, that is my way of being able to see where the end is. Because if you literally just peer out the back, you can see the end of the car. So that is something handy about this car. If you do not have parking sensors and there's no one next to you, you can swing your door open and do that. But yes, shop essentials and I'll see you very soon. Okay, so what did we get? So we got 72% dark chocolate, it's very healthy for you. And chocolate milk, of course. Let's, get, see, if you, let's see if we can put it into our cup holder. Put the seatbelt on first for safety. Let's see if that fits. Oh no, it fell straight through. Okay, everyone, you now join me in the more exciting part of the test. We just completed the town section and we're now on some more inviting country roads. 
we so far have averaged 27 miles per gallon during our town part so it'd be interesting to see what the car would do once we now start hitting these twisties a bit more and putting a bit more throttle movement into the pedal so how does this car drive well on these roads in particular um, it's night and day when you compare it to my volvo s80 v8 um, if we're going to compare completely with all the cars the c63 the porsche cayenne turbo the s80 v8 and this this is probably the worst in terms of how it rides which is probably inevitable with it being a two-seater sports car so i shouldn't really complain but god it is very very firm i have to say in fact, the Z4 over these roads is just very disconcerting. There's so much movement in the steering and it just travels. There's any imperfections in the roads and the car just slightly wanders around. And because the ride is rather firm, as a result, the car generally crashes more than my old laptop. However, this is really where the Z4 comes into its own, is where you get these nice, fast flowing, smooth roads where you can fully extract that inline six, the M54, 230 brake horsepower, 300 newton meters of torque, 0 16, 5.9 seconds. And because it's not actually that quick, you can enjoy it for much, much longer, which makes it all the better in terms of sensations and driving experience. We have match. you get to have fun for so long and not hit the speed limit this makes it all the better in terms of enjoyment it's so brilliant right let's do a quick pull why not because it's an mpg challenge you do sometimes do rag it in the country roads it will spin oh <laughs> it never gets old Oh, right, the top of the red line is so intoxicating. That's going to do wonders for my MPG right now. It's when you get over to about 2,500 RPM. The soundtrack starts playing, it's absolutely phenomenal, and it, and it carries on the boat all the way to about 6,000 RPM, I think, is in this car. But it still sounds absolutely epic when you get all the way to the top. And then especially when you do a rev match as well. Oh, <laughs> I still get giddy over that doing a rev match. I'm still learning how to do this, by the way. Um, but I'm getting better as time goes on, which is good. All right, busy junction here. needs to be sensible. First gear, sport mode. Pull away. ever gets old that does we're on some more now fast smoother i think this is a b road but it's quite well, it's very mundane if i'm honest there's not really much going on so our speed will now be rather consistent so i'm going to check the mpg now now that we're on this sort of road and we're currently averaging 26.4 miles per gallon which Considering how many red lines we've done, it's not actually that bad. But what do you guys think this car will get in terms of MPG? Well, Auto Trader claim that this will do around 31 miles per gallon on the combined cycle. So essentially what we are doing today. But I don't necessarily think we'll do that. I think we'll do much, much more. Um, maybe not too much more. But if I'm going to take an educated guess, I'd probably say around 32 to 33 miles per gallon. Right, so we're just now approaching the last stint before we do a very boring, mundane dual character driving. So, red match. Oh, it, when you get it right, the red matching, it just makes the sensation to drive this car so so amazing. I know I know, I keep saying that, but I cannot emphasize it enough coming from someone who's driven a lot of high performance automatics. It's so refreshing to be in a car. When you get to do that all the time, it is so brilliant. I can see why manual enthusiasts are all over them. I managed to do a little pull here to get up to national. <laughs> it's, 
But the fact you could do that for so long, for that long, without having to break the speed limit, just makes it so brilliant because you never have to feel worried about being pulled over anything. Although it sounds like you're going fast and it will gain attraction because of the noise, but because you're not actually technically speeding, it just makes it so much better. Situation update with my MPG. We are currently doing 30.3 miles per gallon and we're currently sitting at 70 miles per hour. And the reason I'm having to raise my voice to you whilst we're on a 70, which is now turned into a 50, is because at higher speeds in this car, it is quite noisy in the cabin with a lot of wind noise coming from, I suppose, because it's convertible, but also a lot of wind coming from the wing mirrors, which means you do have to speak a bit louder. So that is something to be aware of if you are looking for a Z4. You do get a bit of noise from the wind, but also from the tires as well. And I don't have run flats in this car either, so it's not because I have run flats. But in terms of MPG in this car, I have experienced some crazy numbers. Uh, when I was driving to and from work very sensibly on the dual carriageway, I was getting 40 miles per gallon just driving in the inside lane, 70 miles per hour, without really having to try. Obviously, when I do hit the city and town, it does drop a little bit to about 38 or so. Um, but yeah, 40 miles per gallon, and I have actually reset it whilst I've been on the move in the actual dual carriageway itself for like a seven mile stint to see what I'd average if I was to reset it whilst I was moving. And I think I saw as high as 46 miles per gallon. It stayed like that for about six minutes or so until I had to get off my junction and start driving intermittently through the traffic. But yes, as you can hear at 70 miles per hour, there is quite a bit more tire roar and wind noise. We're currently sat at around two and a half thousand revs as well. So it's not really that low in the rev range in terms of RPM, but I suppose we do only have a six speed manual gearbox. Whereas my C63, I think you sit at about 1700 RPM, but that does have a seven speed automatic transmission. So that's why this rev's probably a bit higher. Right, so we're literally around maybe two to three minutes away from our petrol station where we will find out the results of our fuel economy. So I guess we'll see you there. Right, so we're now just about to pull up at the petrol station and the fuel needle has hardly moved, if I'm honest. It has, gone, it has moved a little bit, so we've definitely used some fuel, but if I'm going to be honest, it's hardly anything. So if I'm going to imagine, we've probably only used like a couple of litres, maybe three litres at best, I don't know. But yeah, that, that is the situation. I'll tell you what MPG on the screen once we park up and I, so we can compare what we did online with the maths with our, our figures we get in a minute and compare it to the onboard computer to see how, well, I suppose, reliable the onboard computer is compared to the maths. Right, so we just parked up and I have now brimmed the tank again and we have covered around 21.5 miles and my computer said that we did 31 miles per gallon. So it'd be interesting to see if that will be verified on the little website that I use. Uh, it did say that I used 3.44 litres of fuel, which if I remember correctly, is not anywhere near as much as I did in the other videos. So that's very interesting to note. And it cost me five pounds five pence to fill up and it was one pound 46.9 for 99 ron and to compare that to the last one i did i think my cayenne turbo i think it was around 190 so it's actually interesting to know how much fuel was dropped for the past two years or so so now if we go on to my mpg calculator to get some results so as it follows we miles we covered is it 21.5? And then the litres of fuel used was 3.44. So if we calculate, we'll get a representation of what we used. So my car thought I did 31 miles per gallon, but what was the real figure? So if we calculate now, we'll find exactly how that. 28.41 miles per gallon. Oh no! Oh no, I, I, I gen oh, that's quite surprising really. I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting this car to be so different to this. That's really caught me off guard because normally in the other cars I've, I've tried these tests with, 
they're quite accurate. If not, they're just a smidge off. But this is a big chunk. That's like two and a half MPG I've lost. Oh, dearie me. Well, I'll put up the other metrics um, if they're not on here already, which they are, so I don't need to. But yeah, that's quite um, a substantial difference. I'm, I'm actually quite disappointed because I love MPG and I thought this car was quite economical. I mean, I mean 28 Point four miles per gallon is not actually that bad considering the manner of driving we did for the vast majority so yes uh, it did turn out that my car did think we do 31 miles per gallon which is exactly what auto trader said but because maths and science says on the um, calculator on there which is more official um, unfortunately we did 28.4 so we didn't quite get the auto trader figure i was looking for but however i do think that's still really good in terms of this still being an inline six it's not turbocharged naturally aspirated i think it did really really well considering and i know this car can do 40 plus mpg um, if you really do try on a long run if you did like 65 miles per hour so i'm actually still proud of this car i know my face is otherwise and i'm a bit disappointed because i do love fuel economy and efficiency so much despite the manner of cars that i drive and buy well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If there's anything else you'd like me to cover on the BMW Z4, then please do let me know. If it's anything fuel economy related, then I'll happily oblige to anything. So yeah, let me know what you want to see in this, more in this car down below. And if you haven't already, then please do like and comment on this video because it really does help push out this video into the algorithm. It helps me a whole lot. So I'd really appreciate that. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye for now.